They're still in VNAV path. It's doing an excellent job. Holding 276. Falling back a little bit. Good time to zoom in. Okay, you'll notice that uh, it's brought the power up a little bit. It's going to go ahead and hold 276 in speed mode. Again, technically speaking, everything it's doing is the best economy mode. It's holding a little power on the descent. Apparently, it's the right thing to do. Just want to point out here that we're currently flying over Lake Como. This is Lake Como sort of has a Y shape to it. Two, two forks. The town of Como is down here. And this is the famous Bellagio, the actual town of Bellagio. It's not just a casino. Look over here. This is actually Malpensa right here. This is an Italian military base. And this is the city of Milan over here. Malpensa, as you can figure out, is way outside of town. What we're going to do, recall, is we're going to fly and we're going to kind of loop back around this way and come in here to the north. And you can see that here. We were looking off to Malpensa and we're going to loop around this way like this. Time to zoom in a little bit more. It's a good time to look at what this data thing here does. Data simply brings up the arrival time when it uh, writes the name of the waypoints. So, it's up to you. I usually prefer to just look at the likes page. Tell us how far we are. A little easier. Okay, we transition below 18,000 here. It's warning us to go to the actual altimeter setting. Which, if you press the B key, it actually is 2992, so we're okay. Now, if you notice, we see the IMA 348. This is telling us that the approach navigation radio has now been tuned. That frequency is out of park. It's now been tuned. And if we go to uh, NAVRAD, you can see that automatically selected the ILS MLS radio. It's automatically selected our ILS uh, frequency for us. Very convenient. Ref 147. This borrow 400 here, that's our minimums, okay? And uh, at 400, obviously, that's uh, not a very valid minimum in the sense that it's below field altitude. Um, borrow just means that it's based on barometric pressure as opposed to radio altimeter. Um, so you can have this set either way. I don't believe that uh, radio altimeter setting is supported in the sim. So just so that you can hear the minimums call-outs, I'm going to go ahead and let's see, the field elevation is about 700 or something. So I'm going to set this for 1100. And what you'll hear, I'm going to set this to 1100. It's a minimums call-out when they pass through 1100 feet altitude, as well as an approaching minimum to come under feet below, uh, before that. So that's all set. Sular, Serrano, we have some points here. Plan mode, showing what we're doing. We're coming down through here. We come around here and on in. Now, there's a couple things you can do if you want to. You can you can use you could use uh, approach mode, in which case you're going to get a uh, uh, approach type thing. This is pointing three four eight. Obviously, you can't even make a U-turn. In which case, you'll have a, a needle here and a needle here. These things are also going to be called out on the artificial horizon. So. What we'll probably do is I'm going to go ahead, leave it on map mode, and we'll use the little indicators over here to show that we're on glide slope and localizer. Okay, jumping ahead a little bit. We're coming up on 12, and we want to see, make sure it's going to do what it's supposed to do on altitude and speed. It's predicting a crossing at Serrano at 11, 6, 20, whatever. Oh, we just crossed Serrano, and we're 11, 8. It's pretty close. We need to cross Riggin 210. Now, something else is supposed to happen, if it works correctly, of course, is that this is going to be a 230 speed setting uh, instead of 276. 
when we cross 10,000. So any minute now, it should go ahead and prime 230 into the uh, set point for the uh, speed hold, for the auto throttle, so that it has time to get down to 230 when we cross 10,000. And then, of course, 210 when we're at, or we're going to be at Riggin. So let's see if that's going to happen. Boom. That, that must have been that little knot, knot there. And we've gone down 232. Two. You notice at this point, at 280, we're good for flaps 1. So just in my way of helping it out, we'll go ahead and put the first lot, notch of slats in here. And there we have it. 2.30 is primed. And we are there in time to be below 10,000. Boom. Just to show you by way of illustration, I'm going to drop this to 3,500. It's not going to go there, remember. I told the FMC be above 4,000 or you're going to be at 4,000 at Navarra. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that to 3,500 and show you that it levels out at 4,000 at Navarra. The other constraint is 210 at Reagan. So at some point, oh, there it goes right now. It goes to 212 to get ready for the decel. And it should go to 210 in time to cross Reagan at 210. We're not actually going to cross Reagan when we're somewhere where it's concluded that it has hit the waypoint, even though it's in a turn, this should prime 210. I also notice we're pretty close to a flaps 1 retract speed, so since we're well below the limit, I'm going to go ahead and go to flaps 5. Now that should put our slides all the way down, which of course they are. Good. No way should be. I was like, we have it right there. And 210 is now set for our rigging crossing limit of 210. That's uh, this point here. We'll call. And recall that 210 max indicator speed at ringing. That's what we were doing. We're coming up at ringing, and we're at 210. And you'll notice it's, uh, it knows we're going to land. So the throttle mode here is go around. What that means is we now have a new thrust limit set, or I should say primed, for go around mode, which is uh, if there's an aircraft on the runway or something doesn't look right, we hit the toga button here, which in this case means it's going to go around, it's going to apply power and execute the misapproach procedure. So it'll, it'll go to go around power automatically for us. Now is a good time to set up for landing. And we're going to select some auto brake. And we are also going to arm the speed brakes. This position here doesn't actually put speed brakes up; it arms them. As soon as the main, as soon as the uh, switch that detects main gear compression is triggered, the spoilers will pop up, and this lever goes all the way down. In a real aircraft, the lever actually move physically on the control. Okay, we cross Reagan 210. We're 4,000 for Navarro. 210, 4,000. There's 210. And we're coming up on 4,000, but we're a little high. That's okay. That was because we transitioned. Um, we had, we had probably had a, a little bit of a discontinuity in the, uh, the VNAV profile. Not a problem. VNAV path means it's going to recover that. 